I've talked extensively on sugar causing weight gain and destroying the kidneys, the heart, the eyes, the nervous system. But I haven't really emphasized the magnitude of what sugar can do to your brain, especially the cognitive connection to the brain. And when I mean cognitive, I'm talking about your ability to put attention on something, to focus in and concentrate. See, when you put your attention on something for a period of time, you're actually ignoring a lot of extra data and distractions that are around you. You have to zone in on one thing, and that requires a good amount of cognitive power. In fact, your ability to hold your attention on something and get something done is really your personal power. And when you lose that and you're so distracted, they call that attention deficit disorder, right? They kind of made up and labeled this condition, which they say is a dopamine deficiency, but there's no proof. That's just a, a theory. Um, they also say that there's no cure. Uh, there's just therapy and there's just medication. I would love to find one person who's ever been cured with therapy for ADD. And I'd like to also find one person that's ever been cured using medications. And I'm talking about actually coming off the medication, I'm talking about Ritalin, correcting the problem. It doesn't because they definitely don't talk about a cure. They say there's no cure, but there's just management. You're managing these symptoms. Now, when we talk about the influence of sugar on the parts of the brain, especially the frontal lobe and the hippocampus, which is uh, involved in memory, learning, and things like that, we do know that there's a very temporary spike in dopamine, okay, which is your pleasure center. It affects your mood, your behavior. It makes you feel better, right? It makes you feel happier, at least for a minute, right? Until uh, the receptors for dopamine start downgrading, okay? So now it takes more and more sugar to create the same effect. But here's the big problem with sugar on the brain. It alters the inhibitory parts of the brain. So now we have less control over our own brains. We have less control over filtering this extra data that's coming in on us 24 seven, and we cannot put our attention on anything for a period of time. So we lose focus. There's actually atrophy of the brain going on over a period of time. There's specifically the frontal lobe as well as the hippocampus and it ages the brain. So it makes your brain older and it reduces blood flow to the brain. And what's really just bizarre to me is that when you look up attention deficit disorder, they talk about hereditary, we, they talk about environmental factors, but they don't ever even mention the word sugar as a direct association or a cause. And let me just first talk about the symptoms of how they describe ADD, okay? Not able to pay attention to detail. Errors due to negligence, okay? Difficulty in focusing attention. Problem with listening. Problem with finishing tasks. Problem organizing. I mean, what if they just never been taught on how to organize something, right? I mean, it's not something that always comes naturally to people. Next one is uh, avoiding activities that require sustained attention. Problem in placing objects back where they belong. <laughs> I think that's probably just genetic because I have a hard time putting things back to where they should be. Gets distracted easily and forgetting tasks. I think this describes the entire population, right? Um, and then how did they come up with this diagnosis? Well, they actually got together in a room and they voted on this, say, there's no objective test, there's no blood test, there's no anything, it's all subjected. Now, since we're on the topic, let me just throw in one little thing on attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, right? This is like, wow. Increased mobility of limbs, the child playing with his hands and feet. Inability to stay seated for a long period of time. I mean, who can, who can sit down for a long period of time? I, I don't know, I think that's, everyone has that issue. All right, three, running and climbing excessively even in situations when this is not appropriate. I mean, isn't this normal for a child? Number four, difficulty playing quietly. So in other words, what you're saying is when you're playing, you have to be quiet, that's normal. I think that's, there's a problem with that. All right, and last one is speaking excessively. That's a problem. I think it's a problem not speaking too much. Like you have someone too quiet versus someone that just likes to talk. Wow, incredible.
So this is how they diagnose it, but then the treatment is Ritalin, right? Ritalin uh, apparently is supposed to increase your dopamine, but it has some slight minor uh, side effects, which I wanna read right here. Tachycardia, high blood pressure, headache, insomnia, anxiety, weight loss, dry mouth, abdominal pain, heart problems, psychosis, and death, okay? And then also withdrawal symptoms, depression, dissatisfaction with life, exhaustion, nightmares, and suicide thoughts. And even the World Health Organization, which I'm surprised they even say this, but says the evidence of benefit versus harm is unclear. I mean, to me, it looks like there's a lot of harm going on when people get on Ritalin and trying to come off of it. Of course, if we want to learn more about this sugar, we want to go to the experts, the Sugar Association, okay? I think it's the sugarassociation.org. What they say is, as long as you practice moderation and portion control, you can have your cake and eat it too, right? But what really gets me is there's two things that they say that are completely lies, okay? Number one is they say carbohydrates are the number one source of energy in the body. That's absolutely not true, right? You can run your body in ketones, actually way more efficiently. So be positively not true. If you run your whole body in sugar for a period of time, you're going to have a lot of health problems. And the second thing uh, they say is sugar is essential for the brain, okay? No, it's not essential for the brain. If you stop eating sugar, your body will start making ketones. There are certain parts of your brain that need sugar, but that can come from your body's ability to make sugar. This is why our livers can do what's called gluconeogenesis, okay? This is a a normal thing, if our body needs a little bit of sugar, it can make it. We don't need to have sugar. So this is false information. All right, so what is the solution? Stop sugar. If you have kids that have uh, a problem with attention deficit disorder, I'm not telling you to get them off the medication, but I'm just saying, if you stop the sugar, you're gonna find that they're gonna start controlling their behavior a lot better. And the easiest way to come off sugar is to replace it with an alternative sugar. I would recommend um, sugar alcohols like xylitol, erythritol, monk fruit, stevia. I will put a link down below of all sorts of recipes. And honestly, it's basically the same sensation of sweet just without being sugar. And then that way it makes it easier. But to be able to get rid of the cravings for sugar, you have to stop sugar. You can't just get rid of the cravings without stopping sugar for a period of time. And I'm only talking about one to two, maybe three days, okay? And you gotta bring your carbs down below 20 grams per day. And that's gonna really help your appetite and reduce your cravings. And I think until you do that, you're really not gonna know that it's doable. It's like, wow, your cravings will go away within three days. And then it's gonna be so much easier, okay? Number two, start taking B1 get a natural source or nutritional yeast because B1 directly helps the nervous energy that both kids and adults have. It helps the brain focus as well as replace the major deficiency that has occurred because of all the sugar. So anytime you consume sugar, you also at the same time better be taking a lot of B1 or else you go in the negative and the symptom of B1 with the brain is a lot of cognitive problems, memory loss, inability to learn, nervous energy, can't focus on anything, restless, restless leg syndrome, insomnia, and even nightmares, believe it or not. Okay, and the third thing is to fix your brain, okay? It's fasting, and you'd fast 18 hours with a six-hour eating window. You're gonna find, if you do this for at least a week, your cognitive function is going to go way up. A lot of you watching have already done this. So please put your comments down below so those people who have not done this can see the massive, amazing successes that fasting can do for your focus, your concentration, and your attention. On that note, let me put up a really good video on how to do intermittent fasting. It's right here. Check it out.